Hello, my name is Wylam, and today we're going to be looking at the Shiv. This is the new quad frame from uh, Drone Eclipse. We actually got a chance to talk to the developer and the creator of this at the TBS Mega Drone X. So we're really excited about taking a look at this frame. This is the six inch model. We just got this in, so we're going to go ahead and take everything out and build it. So let's go ahead and take everything out. First few things are the stickers. So this, uh, this is actually an instruction booklet. I didn't, I thought it was a sticker. So this is the instructional booklet, comes with it, that's nice. Almost every frame that I've ever seen doesn't come with an instruction booklet. So kudos to Drone Eclipse for actually having one. Here's the sticker, cool. And then here's the show sticker. There's actually a cool sticker right here. And then we have the battery strap. Uh, the battery straps from Drone Eclipse, much like the Rode Geek ones, I believe, they're the really nice straps because they have this nice rubbery substance that will really latch onto a battery and make sure the battery stays in place. Standard Velcro on the other side, but a really nice uh, battery strap that comes with the frame. Have the four arms. Uh, these are four mil and uh, standard, you know, carbon fiber. Looks really good. Uh, these are the six inch arms. Put them here. So these are the pieces for uh, the bottom plate. And also, I believe these are going to be uh, the pieces to hold the 1177 camera together. Not sure about this. When we actually build it, I will know more. Here are the spacers that we're going to be using. I believe those are 30 mil spacers. All the screws that you'll need to build this out. And here are the uh, landing skids, is what he calls them. Uh, he doesn't really call them landing pads because they're so low profile. But this is so that if you come in at a you know low trajectory and you skid, it'll protect your carbon fiber. It's actually a really good idea, and it's mounted right below the motor. So it's really nice to have them. They're actually nice and thick. Um, they look kind of thin in the uh, in the pictures that we saw, but the, uh, these are actually really thick and the material seems to be very solid and durable. So that's really nice. And then lastly, we have the top plate of the shiv and then we have two bottom plates. So the arms are sandwiched between the two bottom plates, making it uh, easy to be able to have reinforcement from the top and the, and the bottom. And then we have these to fit on the front and on the back. So that is everything that comes in the bag. Uh, as always, I would always recommend a lightly uh, wet cloth so that you can clean off the carbon fiber before you actually start uh, putting this together. There's going to be a lot of carbon fiber dust. So in the first part of the build, we went ahead and we put on the arms and then we put on the six screws from the bottom going to the top. So as you can see, this is one of the X pattern frames in which all the arms meet in the middle and then they get reinforcements uh, from each other uh, through meeting in the middle. This one's a little bit more elaborate because they actually did some cutouts in the center to uh, lighten up the frame itself. Um, this is something that's very uh, familiar to you if you uh, follow the Alien build. And uh, this is the Alien right here. This is particularly a 4 inch and it does the exact same thing. So all the arms meet in the middle and then uh, they tie them down with, uh, in this case, uh, aluminum screws. So a uh, very familiar pattern. Now uh, for our case, what we're going to do is we're going to put this full top plate on top of this. But before we can do that, we're going to have to install the uh, camera mounting system. And the camera mounting system is actually very unique and it's something that I really like and I'll explain that in a second. So here is the camera attachment right here. Here are the sidewalls. So you want that notch to be facing forward and they'll slide right in. The other one will slide right in right here. And this is, uh, this is actually all in the instruction manual. So if you flip this over, I'll hold these two down. When you slide this top plate in, it's actually going to hold these two in place. Hold on. So there we go. So now these are actually very rigidly put uh, stuck in place and on the bottom 
the front bumper uh, in between the uh, two bottom plates will hold it in place. This is a really nice design because uh, it's one of the first designs that we can see that actually doesn't uh, require the top plate to keep these together. This is really nice for uh, people like myself who like to fly uh, the power cube. So this is what a power cube looks like. And we always need additional space. Uh, the standard uh, spacer length nowadays is about 30 millimeters, but the power cube is about 30 millimeters. So uh, if we use standard spacers, we just don't have enough room to actually fit the power cube in. But when we have something like this, in which the design itself uh, doesn't require the top plate, I can uh, use taller spacers and fit in the power cube without any trouble. So it kind of future-proofs uh, any design that requires a lot of height inside the middle frame. So always uh, thankful of that. So what we can do at this point is we can take the other ones and then we can put them through. And then if you go to the back, there's a bumper on the back that you can slide right in. And then you can add in the last two remaining screws. So this is what it's going to look like uh, when you construct the whole bottom plate. Uh, it looks pretty nice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and install the spacers. And then we'll talk about uh, adding the top frame on. So we went ahead and uh, put on the spacers. So you'll notice that this is uh, going with the uh, eight spacers instead of the six. Although technically you can probably remove these two and save a little weight on spacers and then just uh, use more of these. Uh, I believe these are either steel or aluminum uh, nylon nuts, but it's your choice. But uh, having uh, two extra spacers here will definitely help with uh, distributing uh, any type of uh, impact to the entire frame. So, uh, so far so good, looks really nice. Uh, these four screws on the outside will use the nylon nuts to tighten down. And on the inside, these would be where uh, your flight controller and your power distribution board go. So you would use uh, probably nylon screws uh, for the inside. In my case, since I'm using the power cube, I'll probably only use two of the screws and then the other two remaining ones will not be used. But uh, I'm, I'm fairly fine with that, especially with this interlocking uh, arm design. It's not going to be re a, a real issue. We, we had this with the alien frames and uh, there wasn't any issues with durability. What I do like about uh, this particular design is the fact that since we have two sandwich layers, uh, these uh, bottom plates, uh, I believe they're uh, one and a half mils, but with this type of design, you can easily double or triple up on these uh, bottom and top plates to make the bottom plate stronger, and you wouldn't actually notice a difference on any of the hardware up top. Since uh, this design is able to fit something like a power cube, you can easily make it into a 5 or 6S design. And even with, you know, like two extra layers of the bottom plate, which would make the whole bottom plate like 10 mils thick, uh, you wouldn't notice on a 5 or 6S battery. Uh, that way it's just insignificant. So a uh, really good design in terms of if you want to actually build up the bottom plate to be even stronger, you have, uh, you, you can do it very easily. The only thing that you would need is a, a longer screw so that... Uh, your spacers and your uh, nylon nuts will have something to grab onto uh, if you were to build up the bottom plates. So we'll go ahead and put on the top plate and uh, give you our overall thoughts. So here is the completed frame. Uh, definitely a nice looking frame, very well constructed, uh, good design, good materials. If you look over here on the side, uh, these are definitely 30 mil spacers, which is more than tall enough for uh, standard builds. As I said before, uh, the camera plates don't require the top plate. So uh, depending on what you want to build, you can actually use your own spacers and either lower down the top plate or raise it up uh, depending on your needs. So that's really nice. I, I really love the flexibility of it. I also like the flexibility of being able to add on to the bottom plate and really not affecting any of the hardware or the build um, from, the top, uh, from this top plate on up or this top bottom plate on up. So that's really nice. Also, uh, these uh, motor, mo or motor skid plates, uh, these are actually really, really 
uh, well constructed. It looks like a really good material, definitely better than any 3D printed part that I have used. So really like those, really look forward to putting them on there. If there is one thing that I would like to see, uh, I would like to see different colors for this as an upgrade and it would also be cool to have these as a uh, sort of a uh, motor protection. So right now this will fit over exactly uh, to the arm. I would like it to be where you would be slightly bigger and lifted so that they become uh, protectors of this arm. So you don't have to use super glue to try to retain uh, the integrity of these arms when you crash, but instead uh, this becomes basically a, a skid plate and also a motor or arm protector for the edges of the plates. One thing I would also like to say is this instruction booklet is actually really useful. Uh, this particular uh, layout the lines are really hard to see. I uh, wish the lines were a little bit better, but if you actually spend a moment to take a look at uh, the lines, they will tell you uh, where each screw goes and where to put them. So definitely really nice. Uh, I always like to have instruction, instruction booklets, and this one is clean, it's simple, and it comes with a frame. So kudos to them for actually spending the time to making an instructional booklet that goes with the frame. So the last thing that we did before wrapping up this video is we put on the skid plates which as you can see it fits perfectly on the bottom of each arm. Uh, it does a really nice job. Uh, the screws which is the M3 8mm uh, they are just the proper length to fit almost any motor. Uh, they're just going to poke uh, out the other side of the arm so uh, definitely uh, not nothing to worry about but I would recommend checking your spacing to your motors just in case but I think it will work for most motors uh, if you don't use the skid plates then definitely don't use the 8 mil screws because that will definitely touch the windings on your motors but overall once you put these on uh, these are really really nice uh, parts to have they make the quad sit really uh, nicely and off the ground and they're definitely very slick. So definitely a nice part of uh, the components that you get for this frame. Really liking how it looks, uh, definitely we'll try to do a build video that will completely build out this particular frame for what I wanted to do. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Until next time, thank you for watching.